What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from the Purchase Capital and welcome to the video. In this video, we're talking about my top three stocks for September. As I said I would make this video, we're finally doing it and I also wanted to say I'm going to put a little bit more emphasis and focus on community building activities, making videos for you guys, you know, requested videos for you guys and simply just providing more value. Because we put out a ton of interviews, we're still going to be doing that. But I wanted to change up the channel a bit. I thought it was getting a little bit repetitive. Let me know in the comments if I was wrong or feel free to drop those comments below and offer any suggestions for the channel because um, I will be having a meeting this week and we will be doing some new and exciting things for the channel. More so catering to you guys, providing more value. So that's it for the introduction. Let's get straight into this video about my top three stocks for September. And I've got some new picks. I do have some new picks. So should be an interesting video. And last but not least, if you do support me, the channel and all the videos, but don't forget to explode that like button along with if you are a new viewer to the channel. We appreciate constant steady updates in the markets, new and exciting companies, and you wanna learn a little bit more about investing, then don't forget to cash that subscribe button and hit the market bell for notifications. And let's get straight into comment of the day, guys. So the first comment, what's up, bro? Hope you're doing well. I keep adding to FSM position going long. Also bought a few ACB, couldn't resist it's low, low, woo, still on the fence overlooking. So um, we're definitely gonna be talking about ACB's earnings when they come out. It's a tricky one. I know the stock has continuously been dropping. It's lost um, almost 50% or over 50% now from that initial high once it spiked on last quarter's earnings. So it's gonna be an interesting time. Wanna get into the next comment, William Bryan. Subscribed about a month ago, really enjoy your content, especially gold and silver. However, I noticed too many of your introductions are penny stocks. Certainly there is opportunity and potential there, but many of these companies cannot be purchased by most funds and many retail investors. So we do like to introduce a lot of smaller cap stocks and those tend to be the stocks that, you know, want to do more PR, want to do more interviews because they don't really have their name out there yet. So it's a benefit to my channel and my business, but um, at the same time, I totally understand what you're saying. So that's why I do like to include a variety of large cap, mid cap, and small cap stocks. When it comes to our interviews, like I said, they tend to be smaller cap companies, although we have done companies like First Majestic and bigger companies like that. But um, I do hear your concerns. And what I'm hoping for is that a lot of these penny stocks or smaller cap stocks start to become included into ETFs and funds where investors can actually access these stocks. So I think there's lots of potential in the small cap and penny stock sector. Also, we got to look at it like there's opportunity there before these stocks start to get noticed and you can potentially make higher returns. Once again, never financial advice, but um, just looking at the whole picture. And thank you so much for that comment, William. Next comment goes to me, Sonic Kid, awesome camera angle and volume is on point. So I did adjust it. So thank you for offering those suggestions there in the comments. LOL tech bull baby energy 84 and um, the tech run is crazy. It keeps on going. The markets are in the green today. We'll be taking a look at that in two seconds. And um, last but not least, Sheldon Snow, nice to have you back here. You got to add Cresco Labs, Cure Leaf and Green Thumb Industries to the MJ watch list. You're missing three of the top four MSOs. Come on, man. Always appreciate your videos. You should also do an EV watch list. So great suggestions. And I will have to add those companies ASAP. All right, guys, let's take a look at what's going on in Wall Street today. And the rally continues as the S&P 500 moves up well over 1%. So we're now at 3567. When is this rally going to end? If it is ever going to end, you know, we've got tons of money flowing around in the system. And um, what can I say? It's pretty crazy watching this rally unfold. You know, we were getting worried around 3000 on the S&P 500, seeing if it was going to pull back. But um, with all this money flowing around, the money is going into some of the world's biggest companies and they're becoming a larger and larger component of these indexes. And um, is there an end in sight for this rally? Not too sure. I think that closer to the end of this year, when we get that big event, the political event, we're not going to talk about that. I do think that there will be some volatility, but um, this market has really impressed me. Now we're not going to take too much time when it comes to, you know, reading articles and going over headlines and stuff. I simply just want to talk about what's going on for gold and silver. And it is a very red day for gold and silver. Silver is down over one full dollar, down 4.1% with gold down 1.7%. So silver dropping more than two times gold's plunge. But um, we have seen silver outperform gold to the upside many times. 
So, and a lot more than just two times. So silver at 2745 is still looking pretty good. So I wanna talk quickly one headline about why gold and silver are moving down for all my gold and silver bulls that have been tuning into this channel. You know, since we started covering gold, more thoroughly covering gold and silver. And then it's straight to those top three stocks for September. So according to analysts, shifting expectations on the euro against the US dollar is weighing on precious metal prices, with silver particularly under significant selling pressure. Silver was down 4%. Due to surging momentum in the US dollar, December silver futures last traded at 27.56. The market has given up most of the gains it's made in the last three days. Now, a few quick words. We have an inflation mandate and we care about the overall performance of the European economy. Lane said in an online discussion, the comments come as the euro jumped 12% in just five months and pushed above the 120 Tuesday for the first time in more than two years. So that is what's pushing the price of gold and silver today. I don't know if that is a long-term sustainable factor to keep the precious metals down. Seems like it's just, seems like today, it's just um, some positivity for the traders to bring the prices of gold and silver down as those long-term fundamentals remain in place, in my opinion, at least for gold and silver. And I just wanted to pull up the chart, the seven day chart for the DXY, and we can see that the US dollar is experiencing a pretty nice rally today up 0.45% or 41 basis points. Stronger dollar equals weaker gold and silver prices, guys, we know this, and um, we will be keeping our eyes on the US dollar. I'm, I'm still not confident in this recent rally in the US dollar, not to mention it hasn't made higher highs just yet. In fact, it's made lower lows three times in a row. So although we're getting a rally, I still do remain pretty bearish in the US dollar and pretty bullish on gold and silver. So, so now let's get into those top three stocks for September. One of the stocks that's been my favorite for a very long time and we will be talking about this stock and the first stock is called Fortuna Silver Mines. So as you guys know, I've been a long-term bull for Fortuna Silver Mines and pretty much covered this stock. I've covered this stock for many years, had this stock for many years. The last time I bought some of this was around $2.11 when it tanked in March. Since then, it's ran over 400%, so it's been a really nice run. Still hoping for Fortuna to get into the double digits. It now has a market cap of 1.68 billion Canadian dollars, and it is traded in America under ticker symbol FSM. So let's see what they do. We're just gonna cut straight to it, take a look at their mines. So in terms of their mines, they've got two silver mines and one gold project that's about to start in 2021. Now we know if gold stays high or stays elevated, they're gonna make a killing. And the thing that I really like about Fortuna is their AISC. So we will be getting into that in just two seconds. But two producing silver mines, one gold mine about to come online. Let's take a look at their August 2020 investor presentation. So this is fully updated and new. So 15 years generating sustainable shareholder value. So two operating mines, they've got their Lindero Gold project in Argentina and some exploration going on in Argentina as well. So their San Jose and their Queloma mine is in Mexico and Peru. So they've got exposure to three countries, Mexico, Peru, and Argentina. Now let's take a quick snapshot at their Lindero Gold Project, 100% owned, 13 year reserve life with their 2020 production of 25 to 28,000 ounces. Commercial production will start in Q1 of 2021, which is just around the corner. So I think that that's why Fortuna has ran up because they do expect much higher revenues in the coming quarters. But um, I do think that this gold bull market is also going to last for quite a while. So I do think they're gonna have years of a substantial increase in revenues, which should be sustainable, at least for the near future. Overall project is 97% complete as of June 30th, 2020. Commercial production expected to start in Q1 of 2021. Total construction capital expenditures of between 314 million and 320 million increased to 20 8% over feasibility study estimates, 18,750 tons per day. So the first half of 2021, 3.1 million ounces of silver and 17.2 thousand ounces of gold. Now we know they did have disruptions due to this whole global illness. Last but not least, I wanna talk about their AISC. This is their Kaloma mine in Peru, $14.13 AISC, but their biggest mine there in Mexico, their San Jose mine, has a $9.80 AISC, with four years of reserve life left and production has steadily been increasing, although it did drop off a little bit in 2019, producing roughly seven to eight million ounces of silver. Here's their current asset portfolio, San Jose and their Kiloma mine, that's production development, the Landero Gold Project will start in Q1 of 2021 and they do have exploration projects going on in Argentina, Mexico, Peru, Argentina, 
and Mexico. So two separate exploration stage projects. Like I said, the one thing I'm most excited for is their Landero Gold project in Argentina to start turning away. Producing that gold, we'll see how much they can produce. At nine bucks, I do think that Fortuna is definitely one stock to watch and it has been much higher. I also think that Fortuna is at a different spot than it was just a couple of years ago when the stock ran to $11 or $11, $12. And um, I think it has more potential this time. I think it has more potential to become a mid-tier producer. You know, it already has over a billion dollar market cap and um, it's gonna be an exciting time. It's gonna be exciting to watch Fortuna grow as a company, just as I've been with it for so long. Now we're gonna get into a dividend stock. So what is the second stock? And I was initially gonna choose Algonquin, but I thought to myself, you know what guys, I've talked about Algonquin so much. Let's pick a different one. So this is one that I've recently added to one of my portfolios, not in the public account, but this is Brookfield Infrastructure Partners. And for some reason on the Canadian side, I saw a $2.62 billion market cap and I thought to myself, that's not correct. So on the American side, Brookfield Infrastructure Partners traded on the NYSE under ticker symbol BIP with an $18.35 billion market cap and a 4.55% dividend yield. Now this stock checks a lot of my boxes when it comes to you know a sustainable dividend stock, 52 week range of 25 to 56, currently trading for 46. So in my opinion, it still is discounted compared to so many of the other companies that are 52 week highs, all-time highs, we're actually not even at 52 week highs. So let's see what this company does. So Brookfield Infrastructure Partners is one of the largest owners and operators of critical and diverse global infrastructure networks, which facilitate the movement and storage of energy, water, freight, passengers, and data. The company's objective is to generate a long-term return of 12 to 15% on equity and provide sustainable distributions for unit holders while targeting annual distribution growth of five to 9%. So let's just get straight into their investor presentation. But um, there was a lot of things that I didn't actually know about Brookfield Infrastructure Partners before I started researching them that I learned today. So I was pretty impressed. Corporate profile, Brookfield Infrastructure Partners. And this is as of August, 2020. So global operators with local presence. Brookfield Infrastructure owns high quality, long life assets that provide essential products and services for the global economy. And they're very diversified. So that's something I like as well. 29% North America, 22% Europe. 27% South America and 22% Asia Pacific. With no exposure to China, I was pretty curious, um, not that I have anything against China, but um, they just have exposure to Australia, India, Japan, and New Zealand by the looks of it. So 6.6 .6 million electricity and gas connections, 2,000 kilometers of electricity transmission lines, 3,300 kilometers of greenfield electricity transmission lines under development, 2,700 kilometers of regulated natural gas pipelines, 1.4 million smart meters installed, 32,300 kilometers of rail operations, 4,000 kilometers of toll roads, 13 ports, 16.5 K kilometers of transmission pipelines, 600 BCF of natural gas storage, 619 natural gas processing plants, 3,500 kilometers of raw gas gathering pipelines, 1.6 million residential infrastructure customers, and then last but not least, guys, data infrastructure. So 9,100 9, multi-purpose towers and active rooftop sites, 20,000 kilometers of fiber backbone, 52 data centers and 1,600 cell sites. So infrastructure, critical infrastructure, that's what the company does with a $19 billion market cap and 11% um, compound annual growth rate. So solid track record of annual per unit distribution growth. So that is something that I like to see. And this is over 10 years. So you could consider them a dividend aristocrat. There's their performance since about 2008. So it has in fact outperformed the S&P. Now we're not gonna to dive too much into this investor presentation just as I wanna highlight the opportunity here. I like what they're up to. They check the boxes when it comes to providing infrastructure, being a utility company, but they're more than just that. They're more than just you know an energy utility company. They got transportation and data infrastructure along with a solid diversification across the world. So. This could be one of my new favorite utility stocks, guys. I'm not going to lie. I love what I see here. And um, we're going to be keeping you guys updated on this one. Now, we'll get into the last one. The last one is a stock that I've talked about many times. And I just wanted to reiterate it because um, I want to talk quickly about mental health. So I feel like mental health has been a really big issue over the last little while, compounded by this whole global illness. And the company that is able to 
develop a solution, develop some kind of treatment for various mental health issues, I think will be very successful in the future. But as we know, getting anything approved through the FDA is a tough process. So MindMed is a company that I've followed since the IPO. I've had the pleasure of interviewing their CEO multiple times, got to meet Kevin O'Leary. I was at the exchange for the IPO and um, it was a very tight knit community there. The NEO is a very unique exchange. They're also traded on the OTC markets under ticker symbol MMEDF. It's interesting to see this story unfold and I simply wanna just go over how it's traded, their investor presentation, and then that will be it for the video guys. So in terms of MindMed, I mean, it hasn't even been trading for a year. It's seen lows of around 30 cents. It's seen highs of about 80 cents. And um, so far over this past month, it looks like we're starting to find some ground. So 50 cents has been a really tough resistance level. I really hope that we can break above that. And um, in terms of its market cap, it's got a market cap of over 130 million Canadian dollars at its current level. So basically what MindMed does is they're using psychedelics to discover, develop, and deploy psychedelic inspired medicines to alleviate suffering and improve health. So they're creating transformative medicines to address big problems in society, mainly ADHD addiction, cluster headaches, and anxiety. So here's their pipeline. They're using LSD to research ADHD, headaches, and anxiety, MC18 for opiate addiction, and then they're also doing some research with MDMA and DMT. That's on their homepage. Feel free to check out their website. It's mindmed.co. Now we can quickly take a look at their investor presentation along with their corporate update. Those are two things that I want to briefly touch on. Well, really what this company really comes down to is getting those clinical trials advanced and getting something approved by the FDA, which will take time. But, you know, I'm going to stick with the company. I do have a decent position in the company and um, I would love to see something happen with them. So. Let's take a look, psychedelic inspired medicines, 100 plus billion dollar global total addressable market for psychedelics. And as we can see here, anxiety and ADHD over 10 billion, addiction and depression over addiction and depression, almost 50 billion. So it's a pretty massive market. I just wanted to reiterate a few things. So the first psychedelic inspired medicine has already been approved and that's Bravado by Johnson & Johnson, 1.5 billion in peak estimated sales in just a couple years. There is lots of research underway. So MindMed has a deal with the Switzerland University for the rights on their LSD research. So this is just one of their clinical trials. So guys, to wrap this up, MindMed has multiple clinical trials, some of them phase 2A, some of them phase 2B, specifically anxiety, their headaches, and their ADHD, which are really big issues when it comes to mental health. So I look forward to seeing this company progress and advance through their clinical trials. And um, I think this is more of a long-term one, and this is either one that's going to, you know, shareholders are going to win really big or not really much is going to happen. That's the risk I'm willing to take. I think that the risk to reward ratio for this company is pretty good, and we'll continue to cover it. But um, I know this was a bit of an extended video, so we're going to dive into the charts real quick, and then that will be it for that. So let me know what you think of my top three picks. All right, guys, so in terms of the MJ sector, we are seeing Body and Mind, Delta 9, and Green Organic Dutchman, three biggest gainers with EGF Theramed. Now, guys, in terms of the dividend stocks, taking a look at the dividend stocks, Northwest Healthcare and Brookfield Property Partners, three biggest losers. Brookfield Infrastructure Partners is actually up 4.5% today, so Brookfield Infrastructure Partners having a pretty awesome day. Now, let's take a look at the gold and silver sector, and we are seeing a red day, although... K92 Mining is in the green, hitting 52 week highs yet again. First Majestic, Termalina, and First Mining, three biggest losers on the day. In terms of tech stocks, oh my gosh, guys, the tech rally continues with Microsoft hitting 52 week highs, and Amazon, AEY, and Rockwell Medical in the green. And we are seeing MindMed run just under 1% today. Last but not least, our broader 2020 watch list. We are, in fact, seeing Brookfield Infrastructure, Coca Cola, and Alphabet, three biggest gainers with Tesla declining another 7.6% after that big billion dollar capital raise. So we'll be covering it guys, we'll see what happens with Tesla. And I also heard that there was a three times leveraged bull ETF specifically just for Tesla. <laughs> so what crazy times we're in. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Always remember to purchase capitals for information, education and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. 
This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in the next video.